Hey there, Space Travellers, I am Couch Coop, and we are going to talk about the PC version of No Man's Sky in 2021. The reason I'm bringing it up, I've obviously got both copies on console, and of course, we just had it go positive on Steam. 2016, that game was in the mud for at least four years when it came to reviews on stuff like that, and now it's proudly sitting in a positive light with reviewers, which is really important on stuff like Steam and Metacritic, because a lot of people would just go straight to that prior to buying something, so great news for Hello Games. I'm also going to cover the PC version full stop, and what you're looking at is ultra settings in 1080 on my GTX 1660 Super. I only have an i5, this game would run better on an i7, so it's interesting that I'm mucking around with the variables, we can see the graphics card limit, I'll get to that later, but 1080 at ultra is completely flawless, however, we have a lag when leaving the planet and going into space. You just don't get this on the console version. And of course, the biggest load time on that planet screen. You know the one where it's rushing all the planets past you and various weird German sounding names are coming up? That's on screen for at least five minutes. It's at least five minutes. I remember getting into an episode of Voyager. I'm talking credits. I don't skip the credits. That song, Jerry Goldsmith, you don't get sick of it. We do after seven, so anyway. I didn't even, I forgot that I'd loaded this game up because it had sat on that screen so long. So up in the top right hand corner you can see a green number which is of frames per second. When I first fired this up in 1080 at Ultra on that moon with the blue ship, it was sat at 60 and I was like, way, hey, oh my god, this might be pegged. Hell no. You get down to something that's populated and things do dip. Never saw a dip below 40, 35, okay, so it's not sitting at 30 at all by any stretch. But it doesn't get to that 60 as much as I'd like it to. That's probably because I didn't spend enough money on my graphics card. The number obviously starts going back up once you get inside and there's less for the game to process on screen it does start to get back into the 50s but of course heading back out seeing all that population just dips it again but it's not a jarring dip that's important it's got quite a good variable frame rate system this game it's the same can be said over on console on PlayStation 5 it's got this uncapped thing which allows it to get smoother when it needs to radiation protection External space shots do not obey this rule and look you can see that it's like 55, 59, it's beautifully smooth when you get out amongst the planets which is understandable, not too much furniture, not too much going on but it's a real pleasure as you know I'm big on that pan, that smooth dolly and it gives me that gorgeous smooth rock around and I get to see everything in non-juddery beautiful detail. I've got to get out more. This is a particularly busy planet with particularly large structures, numerous structures as well, and you can see I got it down to about 45. Another thing about having it on high is that it doesn't really sort out the pop-in. The pop-in is kind of always there regardless of what setting you have it on, and that's just to do with the engine and the procedural stuff throwing things at the game at last minute. Okay, so deeper we travel into the darkened woods that is the graphics and the ratio change of this game. So I've put it up to a 2K and I've left it on ultra and this is what we get, a 30 frame kind of pegged. But one thing that everyone will agree with I think is that making a jump from the 60 to 30 frame on the same game, like next to each other, will just always be jarring. But it's good that we get a true 2K and it's still functioning fine. You can play this without any issues whatsoever. It's just that if you've seen it at 1080 and how smooth it is, it starts playing around with your brain a bit. So I kept it at ultra and switched it to 4K, which immediately slows the frame rates down on the cursor, let alone the game itself. And I thought I better just show the audience this. And it, yeah, it runs like um, Cyberpunk did on the PlayStation 4 base model. So a GTX 1660 Super cannot run Cyberpunk at 4K on ultra settings, which is fair enough. Meddling with V-Sync and some of the FAA stuff and the aliasing options may get that frame rate a bit higher, but to tell you the truth, I just don't have time to keep messing around with that. And I'm looking at an 18 to 25 frames per second. That could be improved, but I think we've reached the ceiling of what my machine can do here. The sweet spot for me is this 2K at ultra or 
before putting the 2K version down to the high settings, but I get a lovely PEG 30, sort of. And the difference between high and ultra when it comes to planetary detail and furniture and just basic resolution on things is just not noticeable. It is when you get really close to plants and fauna and look at some of the dust and distance mechanics, but really, if you wanted to go to 60 frames per second, stick it on high and stick it on 2K. It's just the middle ground and it's and it's beautifully butter smooth everywhere, even in and out of space. You don't have to worry about it getting all juddery when you land. So it's a it's a great looking game now, and it's also got some great variables to work with whatever rig you've got. I would love to see a full on 60 frame per second at 4K on Ultra. That is probably a thing. Of course it is, but you just got to sell your house to see those graphics. If you want to know more about the actual game itself and its mechanics and campaign and changes and updates, I'm going to put a playlist in the description. I'm up to about 17 videos highlighting everything Hello Games have done to make this a worthy positive review. I've been Couch Coop. I'll see you down there.